Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to start this section on uh, alternators and motors. We're going to spend a few minutes on alternators and then most of the next, you know, bunch of lessons is all going to be on AC motors. Okay guys, so bear with me on these alternator notes real quick. Um, we won't spend a lot of time at it and it won't really be a big deal, but I want you guys to know a couple of things about alternators because you know, I've been drawing three phase alternators from time to time and single phase alternators from time to time as well. And every time I've drawn them, guys, I've sort of drawn them the same way where we've got a magnetic field on the outside here and then we've got an armature in the inside with, you know, three sets of windings in this case because it happens to be a three phase. But if it was a single phase machine, it would have, you know, one set of windings running around in there. And the reason I draw it this way, guys, is because it's the easiest, you know, to understand what's going on there, right? We've got a bunch of flux, and we've got a bunch of conductors traveling through that flux, and we get a nice, you know, single phase or three phase AC sine wave coming out of there. But I want you to be aware that this isn't the only way this is done, okay? And the reason or the problem, I guess you could say, with doing, you know, producing voltage this way, guys, and by the way, when I talk about alternators and generators, when I'm talking about AC guys, they're the same thing, okay? So don't get confused. Sometimes I call it a generator. Sometimes I call it an AC generator. Sometimes I'll call it an alternator. They're the same machine, okay? An AC generator produces AC. An alternator produces AC. The technically correct term is an alternator for an AC machine and a generator for a DC machine. But, you know, in real life, we call them all generators, right? We don't go out. Canadian Tire and ask them if you can show me the alternators. All right. We ask them to show us, you know, what they got for generators. All right, guys. So here's my alternator or my generator. We've got our rotating conductors and, you know, we'd have to have some slip rings, right, guys, to get this current that we're generating within the machine out of the machine. And the problem with this particular layout is that all the current that I'm producing and going out to my load is coming from these rotating windings, which means that, you know, I'm going to have a bunch of slip rings to get this energy out and all the current that I produce for the load with this particular machine has to travel out the machine through a set of three, you know, slip rings if it's a three phase machine or two slip rings if it's a single phase machine. But if this thing's producing 100 or 200 amps, guys, all that 100 or 200 amps has to travel out of the machine through slip rings. And that's you know, just not really the most efficient way to do it because slip rings, while they're sliding, you know, brushes on a copper ring and it's just not very efficient. And so, you know, here's a sort of another drawing of the same thing here where I've got my rotating windings and then I've got my three phases here, which are my slip rings. And all 200 amps would have to travel through this rotating machinery here. And that isn't very efficient. And so that is what's known as the revolving armature type generator ac generator and it isn't you know it's not uncommon it's used all the time for small machines because it's you know probably easier to build and stuff like that but on a larger alternator or or generator what we're probably going to find out there in real life is the actual conductors that the field flux is you know being induced into are going to be fixed around the outside and we're going to rotate the magnetic field instead and so here's my three phase you know, windings that are in my machine that's going to have voltage induced into them. And then we just put a magnet on the inside and whip that around. And it's going to produce the exact same sine wave as this does. The benefit of this is now the 200 amps, let's say, that's being induced into these conductors for feeding a 200 amp load out there somewhere, they don't have to go through slip rings at all. They're just going to go straight out of the machine because they don't move. Now, the field moves... And most of the time, that field is going to be an electromagnet. And so this machine will still require slip rings. And even if it's a three-phase machine, since this winding is going to be DC for this electromagnet that's whipping around in there, it's only going to require two slip rings, okay? And this, more importantly, the amount of current that it actually is required to create this electromagnet here, even a very powerful electromagnet, is going to be very, very low. Let's say this three-phase generator is delivering 200 amps out to the load. 
the electromagnet that's actually providing the field flux for this thing might only be 5 or 10 amps, okay? And so the slip rings, even though you might still need some for this particular machine, uh, they're going to be little, okay, because uh, the current for the actual electromagnet is much, much less than the current that the machine might be capable of delivering to the load, okay? So the reason I'm telling you this, guys, is I don't want you guys, you know, to be out there in the field looking at some big old generator somewhere at Bruce Nuclear or, you know, anywhere, and you're going to find out that uh, the armature you know, doesn't have the, uh, it's not like this, okay? It might end up being like this, and I don't want you to be confused, and I don't want you to be going like Van Andel. He lied to us, you know? He told us that they rotate the armature conductors, and that's where the field flux is produced, or that's where the voltage is produced. No. A lot of times they'll just, it's just easier, right? Easier to rotate this magnetic field than it is these heavy, heavy conductors that are going to be doing all the work, okay? These might be you know, giant conductors, right? Could could be several hundred amps coming out of this machine, and they just don't want to whip that all around. Just rotate them, the magnet around, and then it'll be easier, okay? But either way, it's going to produce AC. Either way, for these two machines, it's going to produce three-phase. No big deal, okay? But just be aware that they both exist. All right, guys? Now, the other thing I want to talk to you about is this formula right here. F is equal to P times N over 120. You've been using a very similar formula in transformer shop, okay? Or not transformer shop, in uh, electronics, okay? Where you're figuring out the sync speed of a motor, N, and you know the frequency and uh, the number of poles of the motor. Well, this same formula we can use it, it's just transformed differently, to calculate the frequency that a generator outputs if I know the number of poles it has, uh, how fast it's turning, okay, and then the 120 is a constant, okay, so here's the formula, F is equal to P times N over 120. F is going to be the output frequency of the generator. P is the number of poles the generator is going to have, and N is the speed in RPM, and uh, by the way, this machine right here, let's, well, let, let's just say uh, we had a six-pole machine. This is a two-pole machine, right, guys? But uh, let's just for fun try this formula out. If I had a six-pole generator and uh, I was turning at 1,200 RPM, what would the output frequency be of this particular machine? Because, you know, the frequency that's generated is directly proportional to how fast I turn that generator, right guys? So let's calculate it really quickly using this formula, just this example right here. There will be some homework where you get to try it yourself, but let's do it uh, real quick here, okay guys? So F here, it's gonna be P times N over 120. Not too hard, okay? Let's say our machine is six poles, six, okay? And uh, it's running at 1200 RPM over 120. We're going to grab my calculator here, pull it into the screen here. Six, whoops, six times 1200, whoops, I don't know what's going on with my calculator. Six times 1200 equals, divided by 120 equals, look, 60 hertz. Okay, so using this formula right here, you can always predict the output frequency of a generator if you know how many poles and how fast you're turning it okay guys so uh that's it for right now guys come back oh one more thing i want to talk about and by the way this is all in your book unit five handout one okay guys so show some notes and i'm not going to just read all those notes to you that would be terribly boring but this stuff that we're learning here is in the book okay so have a look at it, read it, make sure you understand it, ask me any questions that you want to. Before we go though, I want to get rid of this, you know, get out of this alternator mode here so we can get into motor. So we're going to talk about one more thing and that is paralleling alternators, okay? And paralleling of alternators is done all the time. It's done at Bruce Nuclear and any other place that they produce electricity because it's more efficient to have multiple machines running at 
you know, full capacity than it is to have like one giant machine that runs at full capacity sometimes and, you know, half capacity other times. So what they do is they have multiple machines and during low demand times they run, you know, one of them. And then at, as the demand goes up, they add more machines to, uh, you know, share the load. Now, there's a couple of things that you have to consider if you're going to run more than one alternator in parallel. The first thing you have to consider is you have to have them running at the same frequency, okay? If you've got one alternator producing 60 hertz and the other one's producing 70 hertz and you try to connect them together, okay, that's not going to work, okay, guys? So you can't have that. So frequency is the one thing that's actually listed here, okay? They have to be producing the same voltage, okay? they got to be running at the same frequency, but... Not only that, but the frequencies must be synchronized. And what that means is, I'm going to get my scrap paper out here, is we'll just stick to single phase here because it's easier to see. But even if two machines are running at 60 hertz, okay, so there's machine one, and the other one's producing 60 hertz also at the same voltage, but it's out of sync. In other words, it's like this, okay? You must do something to... You know, bring those two sine waves so that they're right on top of each other before you turn the power on. Now, how are you going to do it? Well, there's a three lamp method here that's, you know, shown in the book and it's a little bit weird. I've drawn another one here for you. So let's say this is my Y connected three phase generator one. It's feeding a bunch of loads and now I want to bring this generator here online by closing, you know, these three blue switches. How am I going to make sure that my voltage is the same, my frequency is the same, and the two sine waves are right on top of each other? In other words, the same phase angle. Well, anytime I have a difference in either voltage or phase angle or frequency, I'm going to have a potential difference that exists between the two generators that I'm trying to bring online. In other words, this one's producing 600 volts, this one's producing 700 volts. I'm going to see that 100 volts, you know, on these two voltmeters, three voltmeters. If I have any voltage present whatsoever there, I know that there's something wrong. The voltage is wrong, the frequency is wrong, or the synchronization is wrong, or the phase angle is wrong. So what I would have to do is like increase or decrease the voltage output of this one and you know change the frequency and make sure they're in sync. And once those two sine waves, guys, are right on top of each other, okay, so here's the one machine, and I finally got my other machine, you know, running like this, right on top, okay? What I will see on my three voltmeters is the voltage is zero. And once it's zero, guys, boom, I can close that switch, and those things will be sharing the load now. All right, guys? So uh, that's what the three-lamp method, you know, here they show, it says voltmeters are lamps, and also you could put three lamps there. And when the lamps go out, it, you know that, you know, everything is cool and you can close the switch. It's to me, voltmeter seems more practical. Now, I'm fully aware, guys, that you will never see anybody doing this, okay, because this is going to be fully automated, right? In Bruce Nuclear or wherever, it's going to be fully auto automated and uh, there's going to be equipment that's uh, synchronizing everything and then there's going to be other equipment that's automatically closing the switch. But even, you know, and not only that, but students say, listen, I'm never going to have to connect, you know, alternators in parallel with Van Andel. Why are you telling me this? Well, we do this all the time, actually, because anytime you put anything to the grid, you are connecting one, you know, source of voltage to an existing, you know, source of voltage, right? And so if I have solar panels on my roof and an inverter in my house that's inverting it, the DC that's produced in the solar panel, and to AC and then connecting that AC to the grid, um, you know, your inverter is actually doing all this, okay? Because what your inverter does, if you have a grid die inverter, which you must have if you're connecting to the grid, it goes out, looks at the frequency, looks at the phase angle, looks at the voltage. It's automatically, you know, synchronizes your itself, really, 
the voltage it's producing and the frequency it's producing and the phase angle it's producing to the grid. And then once that's done, it automatically connects, you know, closes its contactor and collect, connects your solar panels or your wind uh, to the grid. Okay, guys? So this is done in an you know automatically these days. Okay, guys? But I just want you to see that so that you know that that's actually what's occurring. All right, guys? When anything is being tied to the grid. Okay, guys, so come back. We'll start a section on AC motors.